This is Jeremiah on an unseasonably uh, day here. Um, a lot of sunshine in Indiana, which not that much known for sunshine. Sunshine. It's like California here uh, in, in Indiana. So uh, God is giving us grace. Okay, that's number four. That means he's giving you something good that you don't deserve. And that's because of mercy also. He shined it on what you've done wrong. That's what mercy means, number four. We'll always be referring to these categories so that you can learn your Bible, okay? Now, let's get back to number one, number two, number three, number four. So we have a capacity, which is number one. No, I mean, uh, your, the introduction. The whole introduction to beauty is, you might call it letter A, is capacity and ability. Without capacity and ability, you don't exist and you don't enjoy anything. This is huge. It, it, it's basically when, when the master said, you must be born again, and Nicodemus said in John, that I, I know I've been born the first time. Now the criteria for being born again, I'm not going to get into right now. So number one is, number one is enjoying beauty. I just mentioned vacations. Uh, my parents used to take us on vacations, and I really enjoyed looking at the United States because they took us all the way across from California to Indiana. And I got a chance to see that there is a God. Anybody who sees all the stuff you see out here in, in America, and America is a very beautiful place. There's no, there, there's no place more beautiful than America on any of these mesas. Nowhere. And my favorite place is the beaches of California. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We're getting right back into this as we greet you in the only name given, saying lots of amens, true, 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 and because Jesus is the amen, and he is reality. And the thing is, is that we're going to continue with this actualization and enjoy it. And, uh, and we have lots of hallelujahs unto our God. Oh, thank we all our God. And we're constantly reminding ourselves of how the, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, and that is our prize. And we do this over and over again until we just can't stop saying it. Now we have number one, which is the experience of beauty. And number two is you should know through the experience that wowie kazawi. And I always go back to this, because this is one of the last time I'm gonna go through this uh, for this year. Number two is you're responding to this just the way when I, I look, I, one of my favorite painters is Shishkin. I think he's Russian, I forgot. I'm pretty sure he's Russian. But Shishkin is an amazing painter. He, he, he paints real stuff, real looking paintings, but he has a little bit of personality and I like that. Uh, he's probably my third favorite painter of all time. I, I, I just give a, a number, I, I'm not sticking to the numbers. But I did write him down as number three on my list for some of my favorite painters. There's thousands of painters, by the way. You can't keep track of painters. Forget it. At least I, I wouldn't try to do it. I don't have the time. There are so many wonderful painters that have existed, and their work is online right now. We're living in the age of information. You can just go till the cows come home. Uh, just go on. But I have selected landscapes, and I have selected 19th century as my central um, area. Okay? What's the point? When I look at Shishkin's paint, I wonder about his skills, his technique, his paint, um, a little bit about his personality. That's just the way things go. Well, listen, that's the logical way of looking at anything. When you look at anything, you should, you should think designer. Now, America, unfortunately, has gotten away from that. I'm not going to go into this anymore uh, this year, because I want to hammer this point home for 2022, that, that when I went to school, they told me that th there is no designer. 
even though it is it is it is it is more complicated than a one thousand airplanes putting themselves together which i thought was absolutely absurd and it just goes to show you that when you think that things can't be any worse intellectually uh don't hold your breath it's going to get worse when i was young i would have never imagined the 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 depth of mental retardation for someone to look at design that it's extremely complicated and say there's no designer can you imagine looking at an airplane and saying the airplane put itself together now what is the iq the intelligent quotient and wisdom quotient of someone who makes that declaration I've had second graders who would not make that mistake. No, somebody built that airplane. Okay. You passed the class. And then to have the audacity to declare that an artist like Shishkin needs to have recognition. Because he's obviously worked hard, he's talented, and you need to identify Mr. Shishkin. But the tree is the outdoors and the rainbow, we don't need to identify that artist. Shine him on, man. That is beyond absurd. Let's move on to number three, which is appointed times. That's what the, the Hebrew word seth means, S-E-T-H. It's a very significant Hebrew word. It means that God appoints times for everything, and it will never exist outside of his appointed time, never. If something's going to end, this will be the last. That's the way it goes. Number four is inner and outer beauty. We talked about a lot of inner beauty here. And how, and how we, what we have here is we have a lot of references to, first of all, the inner beauty of Jesus Christ and his character and, and, and how he is very, very, very sensitive. And you've got to be careful looking at the Old Testament to try to ascertain the personality of God. You've got to be careful. Because when Jesus comes, the Bible says we have the exact effulgence in other words, you're getting the precise personality of God. And it's absolutely amazing, which is why Matthew chapter 5, we spend a lot of time there because what you have is the introduction to the, some of the most amazing things that have ever been revealed to a human being. We're talking absolutely amazing because Jesus, who is almighty God, is telling you that his inner qualities are that he is so sensitive to the, 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 the care of human beings and to those who are not going to treat them well. I can't emphasize that enough. Now it goes into other beauty, inner beauty qualities pertaining to human beings and what they do and what looks beautiful as far as how they treat people and how that, that character is developed. Okay? Unfortunately, we have to talk about how some people started out uh, developing beautiful character and they went the wrong way and now their character is ugly. That's, that's also what the apostasy means or falling away, which is a big cornerstone of Christianity and Protestantism. Now let's move on to number five, which is, of course, everything's going to be beautiful and that is essentially our top scripture, Ecclesiastes 3.11 pertaining to explaining and showing you what these beautiful things are and how God's going to make everything beautiful in, in a snap, crackle, pop. And we just looked at that, which is 7.5 in Revelation chapter 21. He's, he, there, there's no more pain or no, okay, that's called beautiful in my opinion. 
That's called beautiful. Okay, that's... It doesn't get any more beautiful than that, does it? No more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain ever again. Now the math is going to go into what's the criteria for you getting your RSVP to get into this banquet, into this, to this uh, city. Well, one of them is you can't be a liar. I've been watching uh, Fox News and, and, and some of the politicians have been admitting that they just lie, they've been lying and whatever, and, which means there's a very good chance that they're not going to be in this city right here. This city is going to be full of people who don't cultivate lies. That's one of the big issues here for this city. Now, how much nature is involved? I'm not going to get into that right now because it's some speculation uh, as to the eschatological, you know, what's going to look like and all that. I will give you some images. I already have some on, on, online right now. That, uh, the, I, thought, I thought the artist, the Christian artist, did a very good job of giving us a sneak preview as to what we're looking at here in 21. Okay? 66.21. In this red letter King James Bible that I suggest that you get one of these. Now, let's move on to 6, which is very easy. That's, we have multiple references to that. Revelation 19, that you're going to be beautiful. Let's go there. 19, 19, 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in the linen clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. We, when we can go to David's reference here and come back to that, which we can go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 17, 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. David is referring to contrasting the people who are looking forward to their life and enjoying their life and he's contrasting him to himself to these people who are evidently Israelites who are focusing on their new wine and their lives and their food and their shelter and their, their vacations and so forth. He's contrasting them and saying, but as for me, which is the same thing as great grandson harped on in 40.6, which is, but I say unto you, but you. But, 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 which means on the contrary. And here the master is saying, uh, his grandfather is saying, uh, as for me, I will be happy when I wake up with the new body that I've just been told I'm going to get uh, in 66.19.8. This reference is more along the lines of the beauty of the garment itself. Uh, 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 our lovable master's great-grandfather is referring to contrasting himself to waking up in that condition and that's what's going to make him happy as opposed to the mundane experiences that humans who are children of Adam are going to experience, okay? This is extremely significant and I've mentioned it this, this is probably the third time this year as we move on here, uh, I'm going to stop reading out of the chapter because I, I want to focus on the, the the gems of the wall and so forth, okay? We basically know the size of New Jerusalem because it's about half the size of California. I mean, uh, the United States is probably about as big as Australia uh, as far as square mileage, and I'll get into more of that a little later. I have a video, I have an image that shows you the precise size in reference to the landscape of the topography of the United States, okay? But some of you are going to have to look at some of my videos in order to get some of this, some of this information. I'm not, go I'm not going to put the images here. I'm going to put them in high definition on my playlist, so you're going to have to click them on if you want to look at the gems and the walls. I, I think it's fascinating to look at these colors and talk about them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend very little time talking about the gems I'm going to show you the gems because we've already, I've already been through the gems before. Um, 
We might go through them again, but I really want to use the video and just put some subtitles on there and, and have you enjoy the actual gym as opposed to talking about the gym. We're, we're talking about something that needs some sort of overhead projector to give you, you know, an idea of what's going on. Behold, B-E-H-O-L-D, behold, okay? I might work on that today if I have time. Just sharing some, uh, some of my time with you, but that's not for you to know too much about it. Uh, just being a little talkative here. Now, let's go on to number seven. By the way, six is awfully exciting. If you take your time and you look at those, just those two scriptures I gave you, it's very exciting. The anticipation for the new body and how happy you're going to be with that body was given to a man who, who lived 2,000 years, 3,000 years ago. And that revelation came to him in the middle of the Old Testament where there's no discussion on the subject. There's no discussion on the subject of a new you in, in the Old Testament. It's, 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 it's quite narrow. There's only a few references on such a very, very, very significant topic. I shared this with a brother who was dying, and we prayed for him, and it was the Lord's will to take him home, obviously, and uh, because that's what happened. But I shared a couple of these scriptures with him, and he was very, very happy to receive that scripture, those scriptures, because his pastor was not focusing on that. He's a very good pastor. We're not, I'm not getting on his case. I, I'm not criticizing him. I'm just saying that, you know, it's very sad to see a lot of these Bible teachers who don't take you to the promised land. That's where you're going. You're, you're, you're not going into a war with demons for eternity. That's not, that's not the future you have. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and high places and all of this stuff is going away and we don't need to spend that much time on it. Obviously, we're going to spend time on it. It's part of our Bibles. That's not my point. And there is a war going on. Just because we're focusing on heaven doesn't mean we, we're, we forgot about my principle here, number 24. This is indeed war. But this is a year to back off of the war just a little bit and focus on where you're going. The, to, to the victor goes the spoils. And obviously, I'm a Bible teacher that loves to get into the spoils a little more than other Bible teachers do. Does it make them wrong? I just don't think it is the 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 B student way of teaching. Let's put it that way. Or the A student. I, I don't go along with that. That Bible teacher for that for that gentleman, he should have been been, been sharing, you know, the idea that that going into the book of Revelation and talking about these gifts should be something you should prioritize. And to give it one minute for every th three or four years, uh, that's called, uh, I, I don't buy into that. I don't like that at all. Now, that's just my own personal thing. I'm not criticizing them. Let's move on to seven. And let's move on. Seven, of course, is heaven, which is basically Revelation 21, 22. And we have Ezekiel's vision where we see heaven also with the, uh, the wheels and, and the, uh, the angels and, and the, the, the multiple faces on each uh, angel and so on. And the sea of glass or uh, references to what heaven looks like and the, the science and the, the, uh, the engineering, you know, the, uh, the decoration, the, the decor. You know, 
the tapestry, you know. So anyway, let's move on to eight, which is that's where we st that's where we start getting into Revelation chapter two, and this is where we're getting into specific things that you're going to experience in heaven. In other words, eight is the delineation of number seven. In other words, I'm getting items from heaven. That's all that means. And number eight is tastes great. Uh, a fruit tree that sounds amazing. Nine is a crown that's obviously going to be very beautiful. Evidently, you're going to get some sort of crown, and it, it, it sounds awfully, awfully cool. I mean, it, it, let's go to ten. Ten is hidden manna. There's going to be some sort of uh, magnificent food or some sort of very tasty food that you're going to eat, and the master is referring to that in Revelation chapter 2. Two and three area. Eleven is a white stone with your name on it, and we're going to let that go. I went over that already again, but it sounds awfully interesting. You can even think about what uh, what might the Lord give you a new name? What what what's it going to be? Twelve is under shepherd. We just went over some uh, Luke Luke seventeen and elsewhere. Uh, uh, Revelation 22, talking about how, how you can get some sort of a supervisory position, but you're still a servant and so forth, and, 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 and making some sort of very strong foundation for you, as the Bible says, to be rooted and grounded in these ideas, so that you don't get lost, or someone knocks on your door and tells you that you can be somebody special, based upon your performance and your effort. That's called, <clears throat> wrong answer. 13 is the morning star. That's very easy. Look, Jesus is the morning star. He is the sun. Now, he, obviously the sun is being, it, it's in God's mind. See, the, the sun exists because it's in the mind of Jesus Christ. He's holding it together. He's creating the energy in his own mind. The, the, the energy is not divorced from the mind of Jesus Christ. We can go to John 1.1. 1, 1. There are multiple references we can use. He holds all things together and so forth. And, and, and let's go to John 1.1, 1, John 1, 1, where we look at how the Master Jesus Christ created all things, and he holds all things together by his mind. That's why when Jesus heals people, it, it happens automatically, because your body is in his mind. That's the point. Your body is in the mind of Jesus Christ, much like some sort of science fiction movie where he knows every, he sees every molecule and he knows how to move it and do whatever he wants to with it, it's in his brain. Jesus said your, that the hairs of your head are numbered. He numbers hairs in his brain on your head. Things have a ten tendency to exist because Jesus Christ, he wants them to exist in his brain. It's not, it's not that they exist on their own. When I went to school, they said that things exist on their own and, and they interact with one another. That's not biblical and that's called eh, wrong answer. Things are basically a, a, a unit because they're being held together in the mind of Jesus Christ. That goes for the moon, the sun, the stars, everything, you and me. Without him holding you together, you would dissipate and break off. At the atomic level. You say, Jeremiah, what is that? I, I, you go to my science lesson. I, I, I think I went into that a little bit more with that with you, pertaining to him holding things together. Let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things are made by Him, and without Him not anything made was made, or anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the life of man. That means that the energy you have was placed in you. That's your soul. 
Your soul is electricity. It's a force. It is a power. And God gave you that ability when you were born to express yourself with your soul and your five senses and your voice and your muscles and your hands, etc. That's why the heart is considered the core of the soul. Because when you want something, you have the ability to go after it and to express your desire for that item. The heart is the seat of the soul. Now, let's move on. There's some more scriptures I wanted to get into, but we're going to skip those for now. Talking about him holding all things together basically in his brain, in God's brain. Because atoms are not supposed to be held together. Let's move on. The morning star, Jesus Christ. He is the morning star because he is what? Well, we, 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 already, we already went over 12 quite a bit, the under-shepherd. Now, let, let's move on to 13, which is Luke 17. Let's go to 13, which is the morning star. The reason why Jesus is glowing is because he's pure, and pure love shines. The reason why Jesus shines is because he's pure love. In other words, pure love has to shine. That's the point. It can't help but shine. That's the point. Pure love has effulgence. It glows because love has its own glory. Love has to shine. Father is probably 24,000 miles right on top of your head. That's my scientific uh, conclusion, uh, doing some mathematics. Father is probably 24,000 miles right on top of your head, and there's a very good chance if he didn't have all of those dark waters, which are under his glassy sea uh, uh, fo um, foundation that he's sitting on, in his, on his throne, there's water under Father, and there's no light in the water. If, if those thousands of miles were not uh, uh, dark waters, I'll give you, I'll tell you this, you would probably have the ability to see Father. Even where you're standing right now. You say, that, that sounds awfully far-fetched maybe. Well, listen, you know what? Uh, I'm not saying for sure. I'm just making a guesstimation. I think that if those dark waters were lit, or if they weren't there, which is probably, I don't know, six to 12,000 miles of water. In the top half of this can we live in. They call it the universe, but it's basically a can. God created a can in Genesis chapter one. The top of the can is where he sits. We're in the we're on the inside of the bottom of the can. The top half of the can is to, is water. There's a cake cover in the middle of the can. It's made out of glass. The stars are in that glass cake cover, which is roughly 12,000 miles at the apex of the parabola over your head. And that has, a, that has a handle on it, and that's called Polaris. If there wasn't any water there, which, which has dark properties probably, uh, you, would see, you would probably see Father's throne. That's how bright it is. That's just a guesstimation. Now, as far as everything being blue, I asked in high school, why was the sky blue? The, the, the teacher told me it was atmosphere. That's called wrong answer. The reason why it's blue is because you're looking at water. You're looking at water. Let's move on. We're just about done with this review. 14 fathers, the Lord's going to mention you to, to father personally. That's, that's huge. 15 is the pillar in the temple. 
you're you're a mainstay hanging around father for eternity that sounds awfully nice sixteen is the name of father which is probably a sure jesus and the new jerusalem is going to be put on your forehead somewhere that's interesting and 17 is your is you're going to hang around the throne as your as one of your basic places to hang out uh you're going to hang around jesus christ and it sounds awfully interesting now i'm going to stop right there because we're going to add something here i'm thinking about adding the walls first we could add that the father and son are going to be the only light in the city there's no more sun and moon that might be 18 as we go through this slowly in a pedestrian fashion uh, you know I, i'm going to enumerate these things i'm going to be referring to these through our bible readings so that we we can keep our heads in this chapter here and so forth okay that's it for now i'm going to shut down for the day jeremiah's going to shut down he gets ready for some other lessons and uh your bible teacher as we enjoy getting into the word together i could also go and get started on those 12 foundations and the 12 stones and the ephod uh that the levites wore on their breasts which had 12 stones and evidently god liked to see those stones and so forth and he he, he considered it something that he he could view and it was beautiful and so forth and we're not going to get into that right now but uh, beauty is the essence of what's going on here this year and and we're enjoying getting into this and I, I really enjoy looking at my own videos now i look at my own videos and I, I really enjoy looking at those high definition images of the 12 stones and look at how different people have different uh, perspectives on what those stones look like the colors okay and i'm going to enjoy looking at that on my computer I have not yet get, get, given them to my big computer. I'm only enjoying them on my small computer. I will eventually put them on my giant screen over here. I really enjoy that. That's coming later on. Okay? Hopefully that will be ready for the holidays for me for my own viewing. I want to look at these stones and think about what we're talking about here. I'm going to shut down. Maranatha, the Lord bless you and keep you. Number 624, the doxology there. Maranatha.